I want to welcome you to the Mission College class on 3D modeling using Maya. It's an online class and uh, we're going to uh, take you through step by step building a, a 3D character using polygons. Uh, Maya has uh, two main forms of modeling. There's uh, poly, polygon modeling and NURBS modeling. And NURBS modeling is um, using actually curves that, that define very smooth surfaces. So it's good for things like uh, smooth aerodynamic objects such as cars, planes, industrial design. But we're going to use uh, polygons to build our character. And this is because this is the main form of modeling used in game design and character design. To create polygons, there are a number of places we can go to to access our polygon creation. Up under Create on the title bar, if I click this, we come down to Polygon Primitives and we see sphere, cube, cylinder, cone, and so forth of these primitive types. You see this dotted line. If I click on that dotted line, then I have my menu that I can access and I don't have to go up to the title bar. We can also get to our polygon primitives by going to the polygon shelf. You see the tabs here, surfaces, curves, general. There's a polygon tab and it has not all but most of our primitives. Be sure to get your free Maya software. Uh, as a student, you're eligible to download Maya at no cost to you if we go to Google and I have in the in the field here free Maya for students and we can see autodesk.com free Maya free download free student version for academics and I click on that and here we see free software download for students and educators and that's in fact what I've run the past oh, four or five years has been absolutely free software from them and this is current software it doesn't have any watermarks on the rendering it's um, it's really quite wonderful so you just need to register and that means that you create an account and they don't have any um, repressive sort of questioning or anything like that you just say that you're at Mission College and create an account and you can download their software. Now the only issue really is is your computer at home substantial enough to run Maya because uh, it has quite uh, enormous requirements for memory and and graphics ability uh, so that would be the, the one issue also the download will be in the range of 650 meg uh, and that's a lot so Usually everyone has very fast um, connections on the internet, so it's not an issue. Um, make sure that you get your free software. If I press 4 on the keyboard, then I look at my polygonal bulldog in wireframe mode. If I press 5 on the keyboard, that, that model is flat shaded. If I press 6, that would show the textures that are assigned to the model, I have no I have no textures on this 3D model, so you really see no difference. If I press seven, that turns on the real time uh, lighting, and if I move this light around, you can see the model being updated, just like that. Before we actually start working on our character modeling, let's take a look at how we um, navigate around in the, the Maya interface. If I hold down Alt and I left click, my left mouse button is depressed. I left click and drag horizontally. I rotate uh, around this character. If I hold down Alt and I middle click and drag, then I pan the camera in regards to the, the 3D model here. If I hold Alt and I right click, I'm holding down the right mouse button 
and I click and drag in and out. Then I zoom in and out in, in a very smooth manner, actually. Uh, I can just use a scroll wheel, but it's using a scroll wheel, the middle scroll wheel on the mouse. You can use that to zoom, but it's very rough and exaggerated, I think, um, and tends to induce motion sickness uh, from my perspective. So I prefer to hold Alt and right click to zoom in and out. It's, you have much more control over that. It's important that you be able to select out different components of your polygon model. So the components are, for polygons, are either faces, edges, or points. And we can see right here we've got this arm selected. To frame that, I press the F key and it zooms in. Let me zoom in a little more closely here. And we can clearly see these edges. If I hold down the right mouse button over that mesh, I get a marking menu where I can select edge. And you can see I can select that single edge that is highlighted. If I left double click, it selects all the connected edges. So that's, um, that can be very helpful. So I could just double click, select all those connected edges. The edges moving around the circumference of the arm, I could left double click. And we can see that that in fact is selected the, the edges in a total circumference of that arm. And it's important that you be able to go from one kind of component to another to perform operations on these components. Um, so for example, if I right click and I get this marking menu, I can go to face and wherever uh, the cursor is over a particular face, it turns red. If I click on it, then with the cursor over it, it's green without it's brown. So we can see that in fact, yes, that face is selected. If I want to add to that, I can shift click to add from to that collection of selected faces. If I hold control and left click, I can deselect individual faces. The modeling done for game development is usually always polygons. And modeling in polygons, typically you see these flat faces and hard edges between the faces. So we want to take a look at what, what um, options we have for the appearance of these faceted polygon faces. If we take a look at the arm of this particular character, you can see in fact that there are these extremely blocky and discernible edges between these faces. And if I uh, go up here to mesh smooth, then the appearance of this is of this arm is much, much smoother. However, look at the huge increase in the number of poly faces for that arm.